In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a layout using the array tools. And so what I'll do is select this heart shape and show you under the layout drop down menu, there's a choice called array. And I'll select that. And there's two choices in the array sort of instruction window. We have the rectangular array and the circular array. So I'll start with the rectangular array. And what you can see here is it's going to create a layout from my heart shape. And there'll be two copies horizontally and there'll be two copies vertically. And I get to set the space in between those copies. So if I set them both at let's say 10 millimeters, then I'll have an equal space kind of between them all. And this becomes the orientation of the hearts in the array. And I can change those in a moment. Um, we have check boxes, so if there were multiple colors in the design, I could check to keep those together, and I'll show that again. And same thing, um, I'll show later how do you can use this to create clones, so the new objects become clones of the original. We'll just start with going 2-2, two, two, 10 millimeter spacing, say OK. So you get the idea of what we've created, a layout, four copies of the heart, all facing the same direction, 10 millimeter spacing in between them. Now, if I hit undo, and choose the array tool again, then I can begin to make changes to that. So if I wanted more copies, I could change to have more copies, or even just to change the orientation. So notice if I want, I can rotate by just clicking on the letter P, it'll rotate that to give a different orientation. And so you can change the orientation of one or more of the heart shapes. Now, I'm gonna hit undo, and what we'll do is I'll make the orientation so that they sort of face each other. So another thing you can do, um, I rotated by clicking. If I hold my shift key down and click, it will mirror image. And so if I do it this way, I'm going to rotate this one and mirror image it, and then rotate this one and say OK. And so now you see that I've created four copies of the heart and they've got mirror image copies of each other. And I could even reverse them. For example, I'll do this one more time. Undo, Layout, Array. And I'll make the first one be mirror imaged this way. And then the second one not be mirror imaged. And then just reverse these. I want them to be like this. There, so they all have, let's see, did I get it right? Close, but these ones aren't rotated. So again, one more time. Undo, layout, array. Oh yes, so this one. There. So you can see, you get to change the orientation of each duplicate within your array. Now what we'll do is I'll just reset uh, back to the original again and show using the circular array. So again, layout, array. Now when I change it to a circular array, it's going to tell me right off the bat. It says the rotation center of the selection must be different. Because it was just left at the center, it's not able to create an array with that setup. So I need to cancel. I need to scroll down to my heart and move the rotation point to be basically below the heart. Okay, now if I go ahead and say layout and array and choose the circular array, right now, what we can see here is that this is set to have four um, copies. The step count is the number of copies. And the angle is the sort of distance in between them. And this says that it's going to start at 90 degrees and end at 90 degrees. So it's going to be a perfect circle. And I can control these with any two. If I change any one of these parameters, the rest will change. So for example, this is a slider. I'm going to start at 90, and I'll click and drag and say, OK, make four copies of the heart that starts at 90 and ends at 330 degrees, so within that kind of radius. 
And so then it's going to create 120 copies of the heart, and therefore the step angle is set at 1. If I don't want 120, I only want 4 copies of the heart. Then it calculates based upon the number of degrees and the step count that the step angle should be 30. If I wanted to set the step angle at 20, it would update the number of copies of the heart to 6 to fill from 90 to 330. Now, I'll go ahead and apply this so you get the idea of what it's doing. So, based upon the rotation point that I placed, it made six copies of the heart to start at 90 and to end at 330. So you get the idea. I could then choose the layout for the array, go circular, and if I want to go with a whole sort of circle, oops, I gotta get it all the way to 360 degrees, and now I don't want 359 copies of the heart. Maybe I want to have 10 copies of the heart. And so it calculates my step angle to be 35.9 degrees. And so again, it's going to calculate this all clockwise. And I say OK. And it generates the heart around that clockwise. Now, um, it's kind of interesting. But what if I wanted the hearts to not be touching each other? Then I would need to go undo. Okay, And now the... The, the thing that has to change is the distance from the heart to the rotation center. I'm just going to have to make that a little bit longer. And that's going to give me the ability. So now again, layout, array, circular array. Don't change anything now. Just say OK. And now you can see, because I moved that radius down, that it gave more space. And therefore, all my hearts fit around that in a circle. Now, I'm going to undo this again and show now that I've got the hearts kind of where I want them. I also have the ability to mirror image or rotate the every second heart. So if I want to, I could have every second heart rotated. Or I'll hit undo again, layout, array. Um, I could have every second heart mirror image. So I hold shift key down and click on that. And the other options are to keep the colors together. I'll demonstrate that. Um, coming up I'll maybe use some embroidery designs to use in or to create an array and clone objects if possible so I'll turn that on and say okay and so we've got the layout and you can see now how every sort of set of two hearts are facing each other mirror imaged and they're all clones so if I select any one of these hearts and go node editing and move the points it will edit all of the hearts within the shape to keep that same shape. So that's how you can create a circular array and a rectangular array. And I'll just come back with a couple of examples of using embroidery designs from the clip art collection with the array tool. So now let's use the array tool in conjunction with some of the clip art that comes with the creative drawing software. And so yeah, I can even just grab something like this which when I open it up, I see sort of a quarter of a circle where this could be maybe done as a circular layout. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is decide, OK, when I use that circular layout, generally the first one is at the top. And this sort of looks like it belongs at the bottom. So to make that easy, I'm just going to select it. And I'm going to use the Transform tab. And I'm just going to have it mirror on the Y axis and apply. There. So by doing that, I just simply flipped the design to face the have the orientation that I wanted. Now, I'm going to click and drag to select all of the objects in this embroidery design. And I'll choose Layout and Array. And we'll go to a circular array. And now again, it tells me that I'm going to have to change the center point of that radius to be able to do this. So we'll stop. And if I zoom in a little bit, um, the rotation point is going to be right in the center. So I need to go select all. And right there, when I go over the middle, notice that my mouse turns into that multi-directional arrow. So I'm going to click and drag and bring that down and put it below, like this. Okay. So now when I say view, I'm oh, sorry, layout and array, 
and choose the circular array. And again, we're going to go around a circle, so the full 360 degrees, but I don't want 10 copies of this. I only want there to be four. And so it calculates that the step count needs to be 89.7 you know, degrees for each step. Now, I'm going to leave, right now I've got these set kind of like mirror imaging each other, so I'm just going to unmirror image. Clockwise. Let's try keep colors together and see how that also affects the design and say OK. OK, so a couple things I notice. The first thing is, although it doesn't repeat the colors of my design, it does create a lot of trail threads going from you know the yellow to here to there to there to there to there. Um, so I may not want to choose that as my way of embroidering just because of the high amount of I guess threads to trim. Uh, but that said, you know, not changing the thread several times might be worth it. So it's that's the I guess that's why the option exists. Now, the one thing I did notice is that my layouts overlapped a little bit. And so I could probably tweak that. Uh, again, I'm just going to zoom back out so that I can see it a little better. And then undo. So back to the original. And it's about the distance for this radius point. Now, if I move that down again and I go just a little bit further and say layout array circular array and I shouldn't have to change anything else at this point I can say actually I can turn the keep colors together off and see how that affects the design and I'll say okay so now I've maybe gone too far the other direction where that radius point is um, you know a little bit too far away from the center so why don't we try undo just bring it up a little tiny bit and then run the tool again, array, circular array. So you can see how you can keep kind of going with this until you get it how you like it. And so it's just a matter of tweaking. The radius point and choosing layout and array, circular array, say OK. Until you get it to where you like it. So that's the circular array. And we could probably find a good example for a rectangular array as well. So um, just scrolling through the items that come up, I guess it doesn't really matter other than, you know, just to show the changing of the orientation. So for example, we'll just pick a little flower that has kind of a direct, bit of a direction to it like this. So if I select this and choose layout and array, and then work on a rectangular array. So this is a rectangular array with two copies, uh, vertical and horizontal, with 10 millimeters in between them. And they're set, as we had it before, with the hearts to kind of all face different directions. So if I say OK, you'll get the idea that um, each one of our designs is mirror image to each other and mirror image to the one to the bottom. And yeah, if you didn't like that, you could hit undo and kind of tweak the layout of the array until you were happy. So um, if you wanted less space in between them, maybe we want no space horizontally. We want them to be touching horizontally. So it'll make the two sort of touching horizontally. Maybe it makes more sense to have them have the spacing the opposite. So uh, again, undo and then choose layout array and I'll have 10 millimeters horizontal, but we'll go with zero vertical. You know, and so you, you can see the difference, that it changes right away, and you can decide whether or not you like it. And so, yeah, that's how you can choose to create an array, either rectangular or circle, based on your embroidery designs.